This is the Weeble 3, and this is the RS3. Today, we're gonna to compare and break down the differences between these two gimbals. Hey, my name is Jake, and I create content here to help solo creators on the go. So I test and review lots of filmmaking equipment like drones, cameras, lenses, gimbals here in Alaska, and I teach you the skills you need so you can earn money from your video or your photo work. In breaking down the differences between these two gimbals, we've gotta start with stabilization. But first, full disclosure, while this video isn't sponsored by Shu, and they did send me the Weeble 3 to test and review a few months back, since the main purpose of a gimbal is to stabilize your footage and get really smooth, footage out of your camera, I will say that both of these gimbals stabilize extremely well, and they both have a similar capacity for weight of about 6.6 .6 pounds or 3 kg. But I will say that this is the best gimbal I've used from Zhuin, and I have used, I think, five generations or six generations of their gimbals in various iterations, all the way from the Weeble Lab and the original Crane, all the way up now to the Weeble 3. The algorithms and the strength of the motors built into this gimbal are some of the best I've used. And I'm gonna show you some samples right here of walking and running. Now in that test, I made no effort to do the ninja walk or the gimbal walk where you carefully walk heel toe, heel toe to make as little var jarring vibrations as possible. I just simply walked down the beach. I just wanted to push both of these gimbals and see what they could do. In this next test, I ran down the beach as fast as I could while holding both of these gimbals down low to the ground so that you could see every possible bit of vibration as I was running down the beach, which is also really hard to run down the beach with the gimbals held way down at the bottom like this. Both gimbals were carrying the exact same loadout and same lens combination. Both of them were set up exactly the same way and both of them were auto-tuned via the app or via the internal auto-tune system that's built into each of these gimbals. There is one other area that historically gimbals have had a real issue and that's anytime you do a combination movement where you're engaging more than one axis at the same time. So for example, rising or raising the gimbal up so the tilt axis is activated where you're starting like this and you're coming up like that and then also panning at the same time. Now that we've seen the differences between these two gimbals and how well they stabilize footage using the exact same camera and lens loadout and filmed at the exact same time to minimize as many uh, variables as possible, we need to break down some of the differences between the two gimbals so you can make a good decision based on how you use them or maybe your budget because there is a fair amount of difference in feature set between the two and there is a fair amount of difference between the two in price. When it comes to features, there are quite a few differences between these two. The DJI has this large touchscreen in the back here that you can move and touch and do whatever you need to do. And while that's nice, I've actually found it to get in the way a little bit because I've accidentally touched things while I've been filming, not realizing that I did, or maybe a small drop of water or something like that will get on the touch screen and, in, and do something and make a change to something that I didn't intend. Now there is a way to lock the touch screen on the RS3, which is useful. Um, I just forgot to do it a few times. The Weeble 3 on the other hand doesn't have a touch screen. It does have a small, really bright OLED screen, which doesn't get in the way. And because you have the menu button here to get into the menus and then a jog wheel, which can be a little bit cumbersome to get around. I find it's pretty easy to figure it out. And because both of these include an app that connects really quickly to the gimbals and then gives you a much finer, much broader level of control over each of the gimbals, I don't find it to be a big deal. Beyond the screens on both of these, which both of them are bright and easy to see, they both have a joystick to be able to control the gimbals, and then they both have a record stop and stop button and a mode button. Now here, the RS3 has the switch that will select between pan follow vortex or FPV mode and pan follow, pan tilt follow mode. Whereas the Weevil is a little bit simpler in its approach. It doesn't have those extra buttons. It just has a mode button that you can cycle through the different modes. And then also you can you know, start and stop recording if you've got your camera plugged in and set properly. Both of these gimbals have a trigger system, which you can use to you know, set up selfie mode or uh, recenter and uh, have them centered. And then you can also, both of them have a jog wheel, which you can use and set up for different things. Now the Weeble 3 
will control Sony zoom, uh, power zoom lenses. So you can set this up to where you can actually use it to use the power zoom in your camera, which I find really useful since I have the new 16 to 35 power zoom lens. One thing to note is that both of these gimbals, their controls are laid out um, slightly differently. DJI has laid out everything very centrally here, whereas the Weeble 3 has everything that's really meant for a right-handed person to use with their thumb. I find it really nice and really comfortable, easy to control everything with my thumb here and nice to use it one-handed. A couple of other notable features between these two gimbals is the inclusion of this little light on the Weeble 3, which is really actually very useful in certain situations. It changes color temperature, so you can go from warm to daylight. And then of course you can dim it down in 10% increments from 10 to 100. The light actually does come in handy if you're out in certain situations where you're gonna need a little extra light to fill on your face. Like here, I was exploring this old World War II fort and it came in really nice to be able to light both our way into the fort and then also light my, myself up as I was in there filming a little bit. Another feature that the Weevil 3 has that no other gimbal has right now is this little directional microphone. This is the example of what the camera mics, the built-in mics on the camera sound like. They're always very ambient. There's a lot of extra room noise and stuff like that. And so if you're in a crowded space or a place where there's a lot of other noise, it might be an issue. But then if you plug in the mic from the gimbal itself, you do have to reduce a little bit of bass and then it actually doesn't sound that bad. And it does give you a much more direct, much more focused sound, which can be useful in a tight space. And the same thing goes with the little light on there. Like if you just need that little bit of extra and you don't want to have a lot of extra equipment with you, it is nice that you at least have the option. And that brings us to the design and some of the other physical features. Both of these gimbals do feature locking mechanisms. The DJI has this very interesting electronic locking system, which while I do like it, I also am a little worried about how long those things will last, the little motors or however they're using to switch the locks on and off. The Weevil 3, on the other hand, has the most robust gimbal locks I think I've ever seen. They're massive and they, when they engage, you can really tell that they engage hard and they are locked in place. Both of these gimbals use a combination style plate both of them are 501, uh, Manfrotto 501 style plates compatible, but Juin has opted to do this uh, sort of specialized plate on the bottom here, which I'm not really a fan of because I use Arca Swiss on everything. I use these little peak design plates um, on everything because I use a peak design tripod. But that being said, if you just need a way to take your camera on and off the gimbal quickly, the plate, the quick release plate that Juin has included works extremely well. The RS3 has a similar system, but it also has an Arca Swiss compatible plate on top. The only issue is that because of this system right here, the locking mechanism, you have to use the Arca Swiss plate that came with the RS2. I cannot use this because the camera will bump and bottom out against this little lever here. So while they both do have a quick release system on the gimbal, um, I find that uh, either one of them, I probably am going to use this plate over some of the other ones. That brings us to batteries and battery life. Now the RS3 does have a removable battery that comes out down at the bottom. So you could have multiple batteries for it and it does feature fast charging power delivery. Battery life on this is rated at 12 hours. The Weevil 3 on the other hand does not have a removable battery. It does feature power delivery fast charging so you can charge it while you're working but the battery life on this is rated at 21 hours. And I can vouch for the fact that I've been out a full day shooting. And actually this is after a full day shooting. The battery life on this is about 60%, 70%, 65%. The battery life of this is at 30%. So this has a lot longer runtime. Another interesting design choice that I wasn't sure about what to think about it at first is the way the bottom of the Weevil is. It kind of works as a stand without needing to use a tripod. Now, I wouldn't let it like sit there and stand on a wobbly table or anything like that, but if you need to set it down somewhere for just a minute so you can kind of recalibrate or you know get something out of your backpack or something like that, this does work as a stand. I still use the small tripod here just because it gives it a lot more stability and I'm not worried about it, but it's kind of nice that it works in a pinch. And because of the base, it does come with two quarter 20s, one on each side. Now, it's not exactly a rosette mount, but it will like you can put a quarter 20 accessory on there. And this thing, I wasn't sure what to think about it when I first got it. It was supposed to take some of the strain off your wrist when you're shooting low. 
And after using it a lot this way, I will, it does take a lot of strain off your wrist. It's kind of surprising. Of course, with the RS3, you definitely want to use this tripod, even though you can kind of balance it, it's extremely tippy and I would not set it down that way. But when it comes to quarter 20s, there are no quarter 20 on this. What they did is put a NATO rail on each side so you can attach something to the NATO rail and then use that to build out whatever you need to if you're attaching a monitor or something like that. When it comes to the size and form factor, the Weeble 3 definitely is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter when it comes uh, sideways like this. Now, yes, you can break the DJI down all the way with the battery, taking the battery out, and then it becomes smaller in some senses. Still wider from the side. The motors are quite a bit larger as far as uh, the what's around the motor belts. And so for me, I think the Weeble 3 has really been fantastic for travel, which I've been doing a lot of lately because I can slip it into the front of my camera bag and I really don't even notice that it's there. And then it comes down to one of the more important factors for most people, and that's the price. Depending on what your budget is, one of these may fit. The base model of the RS3 or the base package of the RS3 is $549 US dollars, where the base model of the Weeble 3 is $449. For me, given the size and the feature set, including the little light, which I've used quite a bit, I think the Weeble 3 is probably one of the best options on the market right now for a small gimbal that you can use with some smaller, lighter weight uh, mirrorless setups. Although really six and a half pounds is not that light a weight for a camera and a lens combination anymore. No matter what gimbal you have or what gimbal you're gonna buy, you're gonna wanna watch this video right here, which shows you the basic ways of how to set up and balance a gimbal properly, which will be the cornerstone of getting the best footage out of any gimbal and camera combination. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream, which happens most Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.